Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look into an overview of Azure Data Storage. First, let's look into Azure SQL Database. Azure SQL Database is a fully managed platform as a service database engine that handles most of the database management functions such as upgrading, patching, backups, and monitoring without user involvement. Azure SQL Database is always running on the latest stable version of SQL Server Database Engine and patched OS with 99.99% availability. Task capabilities that are built into Azure SQL Database enable you to focus on the domain-specific database administration and optimization activities that are critical for your business. With Azure SQL Database, you can create a highly available and high-performance data storage layer for the applications and solutions in Azure. SQL Database enables you to process through relational data and non-relational structures such as graphs, JSON, spatial, and XML. Azure Database is available in two purchasing models, vCore-based purchasing model and DTU-based purchasing model. An SQL database is a fully managed service that has built-in availability, backups, and other common maintenance operations. Microsoft handles all patching and updating of the SQL and operating system core, so you don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure. An Azure SQL database provides two different options, single database and elastic pool. Single database represents a fully managed isolated database. You might use this option if you have modern cloud applications and microservices that need a single reliable data source. A single database is similar to a contained database in the SQL Server Database Engine. What is Elastic Pool? Elastic Pool is a collection of single databases with a shared set of resources such as CPU or memory. And single database can be moved into and out of an Elastic Pool. Now let us look into Azure Cosmos DB. Azure Cosmos DB is a globally distributed database service. It supports schema-less data that lets you build highly responsive and always on application to support constantly changing data. And you can use this feature to store data that is updated and maintained by users around the world. This is an example which shows a sample Azure Cosmos DB database that is used to store data that accessed by people located across the globe. And Azure Cosmos DB is a schema agnostic database engine. It automatically indexes all data without requiring you to deal with schema and index management. It's also multi-model, natively supports document, key value, graph, and common family data models. Some of the Azure Cosmos DB features include geo-replication, elastic scaling of throughput and storage worldwide, and five well-defined consistency levels. Now let's learn about Azure Blob Storage. Azure Blob Storage is unstructured, meaning that there are no restrictions on the kinds of data it can hold. Blobs are highly scalable and apps work with blobs in much the same way as they would work with files on a disk, such as reading and writing data. Blob storage can manage thousands of simultaneous uploads, massive amounts of video data, constantly growing log files, and can be reached from anywhere with an internet connection. And blobs aren't limited to common file formats. A blob could contain gigabytes of binary data streamed from a scientific instrument or an encrypted message for another application or data in a custom format for an app you are developing. Azure Blob Storage lets you stream large videos and audio files directly to users' browser from anywhere. And Blob Storage is also used to store data for backup, disaster recovery, and archiving. 
and it can store up to 8 terabytes of data for virtual machines. Some of the common features that makes Azure Storage a good choice are multiple concurrency strategies, disaster recovery and high availability options, encryption at rest, and role-based access control to control access using Azure Active Directory users and groups. Let's learn about Azure Data Lake Storage. The Data Lake feature allows you to perform analytics on your data usage and prepare reports. And Data Lake is a large repository that stores both structured and unstructured data. Azure Data Lake Storage combines the scalability and cost benefits of object storage with the reliability and performance of big data file system capabilities. This is an example illustration which shows how Data Lake stores all the business data and makes it available for analysis. An Azure Data Lake Store is an enterprise-wide hyperscale repository for big data analytic workloads. And Data Lake enables you to capture data of any size, type, and injection speed in one single secure location for operational and exploratory analysis. The next one is Azure Files. Azure Files offers fully managed file shares in the cloud that are accessible via the industry standard server message block protocol, which is an SMB protocol. Azure File Shares can be mounted concurrently by cloud or on premises deployments of Windows, Linux, and Mac operating systems. Applications running in Azure Virtual Machines or Cloud services can mount a file storage share to access file data, just as a desktop application would mount a typical SMB share. Any number of Azure Virtual Machines or roles can mount and access the file storage share simultaneously. Typical use case scenarios for Azure files could be to share files anywhere in the world, to share diagnostic data or application data sharing. Now let's look into Azure Queue. Azure Queue Storage is a service for storing large numbers of messages that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Azure Queue Storage can be used to help build flexible applications and separate functions for better durability across large workloads. When application components are decoupled, they can scale independently. And Queue Storage provides asynchronous message queuing for communication between application components whether they are running in the cloud, on desktop, on-premises, or on mobile devices. Typically, there are one or more center components and one or more receiver components. Center components add messages to the queue, while receiver components retrieve messages from the front of the queue for processing. You can use queue storage to create a backlog of work and to pass messages between different Azure web services or distribute load among different web servers and to manage burst of traffic or to build resilience against component failures when multiple users access your data at the same time. And the last type of storage is a disk storage. Disk storage provides disks for virtual machines, applications, and other services to access and use as they need, similar to how they would be in on-premises scenarios. Disk storage allows data to be persistently stored and accessed from an attached virtual hard disk. The disk can be managed or unmanaged by the Azure and therefore managed and configured by the user. Typical scenarios for using disk storage is if you want to lift and shift applications that read and write data to persistent disk, you would use disk storage. Or if you are storing data that is not required to be accessed from outside of the virtual machine to which the disk is attached. And this come in many different sizes and performance level from a solid state drives to traditional spinning hard drive with varying performance abilities. When working with virtual machines, you can use standard SSD and hard disk disk for less critical workloads and premium SSD disk for mission-critical production applications. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we are going to learn about how to recommend database service tier sizing. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.